I am The Craft Dad. Welcome back to Phone Sword Part 9. We're almost done, folks, so bear with me. When we left off, we completed the front part of the sword. So the next part is the handle and the hilt, or the back part of the sword, which is also going to be the battery compartment. So for the handle, I had just bought some cloth that had a nice design on it. I cut the cloth into uh, long strips, and I just uh, hot glued one end and just basically started wrapping the cloth around the wires for the handle. Um, I did it to where uh, probably, you know, one quarter of an inch was showing, and I just continued to wrap it, and this actually made the handle surprisingly soft and nice for my kids to carry. You know, so you can do different methods. Uh, some people like to wrap the hilt of the sword, or I mean the, the handle in warbler itself, but I wanted to do it with cloth. So you see here, I used warbler to hold the back end together, you know, and this kind of hard getting it to stick to the cloth, but once the warbler cools off, it works great. As you can see here, I have Nintendo buttons. For those of you who remember the Nintendo, those were cheap and I was able to get them. I'm using a 9 volt battery for my system, so I have 9 volt adapters to make it easy to connect and disconnect my batteries. I'm pre wiring the uh, Nintendo buttons here because part of it's going to be correct, connected directly to the wires that I had sticking out the back of the handle. The other side is going to be connected with the battery uh, in the loop. And so here I'm positioning the wires and getting them ready for soldering. I solder these parts because the, the hair string wires are very hard to keep there and hot glue just doesn't do it justice. And this part's probably going to be moving and taking some strain from the batteries coming in and out. And so I want it to be as sturdy as possible. So as you can see here, I'm uh, rigging up something with the button, getting the... Uh, getting it connected. I'm uh, going to be connecting a battery here. So I'm wiring it all up. That way I can pop a battery on and test my system. Now, because at this stage in the game, I you know don't have a real plan, I'm just going to hot glue the connections from the switch and the battery to the actual sword itself. That way, if I got to change something, I can easily tear it apart. So you can see here, I'm trying to figure out, do I want the battery, you know, lengthwise side by side with the button? Do I, you know, how do I want it? So I end up uh, figuring out I'll do a try it side by side and going to have to construct a box type configuration to house the switch and the battery. Now the switch that I got, it's a push button switch where it pushes in and then pushes out. And so, you know, that may not have been the best switch here. I, you know, probably would have been better to spend a little money and get a uh, simple toggle switch because then I could have done any type of uh, back handle there that I want. So as you can see here, I've created some type of a case. I'm trying to uh, create it so that the back end is uh, holding on to the wires that are sticking out at the back of the sword, which turns out to be a pretty stable place to hold it, although it still wobbles a lot because I can't get a very tight fit back there. You know, so I even take some foam, I, I cut a hole in it, and I force the wires through. I'm trying to get the wires to, you know, to hold still, but it's just still too flimsy. And uh, as I work and construct this and and I'm starting to see that it's it's coming out really bulky, and uh, I'm just I'm not liking this right now as I'm building it. But you know, hey, you gotta try. So you know, I'm trying to figure out how would I do the switch, you know, the button. How would I get the battery compartment open so I could get to the battery to switch it out? Because I know the kids are gonna kill the batteries. And you know, so I ended up not liking the way it was looking. So I'm heating everything back up here and tearing it apart. So that's what you see ripping it apart which is great with warbler because then I can rip it apart and I can use that warbler for something else you know like modeling clay so instead I grab the largest medicine bottles that I have and I start figuring out okay well how can I make you know make use of this so I, I cut a hole and I figure out you know the right size that the uh, button and stuff will slide through and the wires of the back end of the sword will slide through and so I make it uh, just wide enough and I mark it out, figure out kind of where it's at on the bottom of the bottle, and it follows one of the lines that's already there. So I get my hot iron, and I just basically melt my way through the bottom of the bottle and create a hole. And this hole uh, turned out, you know, rather nicely. It melted really nice through the bottom of the, the plastic bottle. Now, when I forced the wires through, 
um, and I'll show that later, it, it actually holds it really nice, really tight. And so here I'm making a, a hole into the lid for the switch because I figure, you know what, I'll just have the switch pop out the top of the lid and then I can affix the switch to the lid so that that way, you know, I have a, a when I, I can pop the lid off and get to the battery that's inside the medicine bottle there. And so as you can see here, I cut the square in order to get the square button out. You know, and I just kind of trial and error, you know, melt it, cut it, see if I can stick the button through. If it doesn't fit, then melt it, cut it some more. You know, just keep trying, trying, trying. Uh, and see here, this is where I've got the bottle slid onto the back end of the sword. And it slid over the wires. I was able to pop the wires in nicely. And I filled it up the bottom part with hot glue. So the hot glue adhered to the bottle, it adhered to the wires. And it ended up making it a very, very nice, tight, stable fit. Now I'm taking a chance here because I didn't really make sure that the battery and the long switch fit inside the medicine bottle. So uh, <laughs> do some test fitting first. Uh, I, I tried it, but I didn't try it the way I should have. So as you can see here, I've got the switch sticking out. I've uh, adhered the switch to the top of the bottle. Be careful how you how you adhere it. Um, if you use too much hot glue, it will mess up the top of the bottle and you won't be able to get the lid back on. So as you can see here, I've got just a simple button on the top for testing. Uh, I'm now adding the hot glue. I was just using the plastic piece that I pulled off the top of the bottle to hold the uh, switch there. So as you can see here, I'm working on another one and I'm uh, shaving off parts of the metal that I don't need so that I can make it fit nicely into the lid of the bottle. Uh, another picture here, you know, filling up that bottom portion with hot glue, making sure the wires are as far off to the side as I can because I'm going to be sliding the square battery in there uh, and it's going to be a tight fit. So, you know, here just moving some stuff around, moving some hot glue around. You know, really it's just squeeze the hot glue in and let it melt down to the bottom. Make sure I got it down the center shaft of the uh, sword so it really makes things nice and tight. Now I've got a lot of wires moving around. So here you can see I'm getting the uh, plastic piece to the uh, that goes to the lid uh, back on there, getting ready to uh, get this button uh, adhered to it. And I'm uh, putting some hot glue on the metal, you know, uh, where the hole's at, you know, just to try to get it to stick initially. Uh, that way I can uh, put a layer of hot glue on the back side. But again, like I said, be careful with how much hot glue you had. If you had too much, then you just messed up the work you did and you'll have to tear it apart. It's not easy. And like I said, if you had too much hot glue, you're going to have to try to remove it, melt it, move it around somehow. And that's what I'm doing here. I ended up adding too much hot glue and so I had to remelt it and, and rework it in the switch where I needed it and then holding it there until the hot glue cooled off. So as you can see here, you know, just again putting things back together. Uh, eventually I'm going to get the battery in there and I'm going to pop it on. Luckily, I lucked out. Everything fits nicely. <laughs> So as you can see here, and now I'm putting on, uh, figuring out, okay, what do I want to do for the back switch? Well, I want some type of a, a button or something that the kids can, you know, slap on or push. But I want it, it's going to have to be the same shape as the medicine bottle lid, you know. So since I've got two swords, I wanted them to have different shaped buttons. So and just took some thick foam because I wanted this to be, you know, padded so because the battery, the, the bottom portion of it sticks out pretty high. It's got this little node you know, on the button itself. So I cut out circles and then what I use is the Dremel. I made one round and I made the other one more like a octagon, you know, like a stop sign. You know, it's just simple using a Dremel, quickly going around. This is the Dremel 4000 I'm using with the flex holes attachment. So as you see here, picture, I've got one that's rounded and one that's uh, squared off. You know, and it wasn't hard to do. As you can see, they're uh, reused from another project I decided not to finish. That's why they got the lines in there. So now I heat the back up, and I took the uh, the button, and I pressed, uh, I put the foam. I didn't take the picture of this. I have it. I, re I removed it. But I figured out where the button's going to need to be indented in using my hot iron. I melt out the foam so I can squeeze the button in there uh, with hot glue. 
to get a nice tight fit. So as you can see here, I got the button in there now. I've got the hot glue there, and uh, don't use your fingers because as the hot glue squeezes out, it's going to burn your fingers. So here it is. The battery's in there, the button's in there, or the wires are in there. It's nice and secured, and I got the button on the back to hit. So what next? Well, we got to test your LEDs. Make sure you didn't screw up your connection. So test, test, and retest. And of course, you got one, you got to test both. So here I am, nice big happy grin, uh, showing off to the wife. She's taking pictures for me. So you can see the swords are looking awesome. Of course, can't leave them like this because they just look funny. You know, although the brown and gray and you know with the gems that doesn't look too bad, but you know I want to paint them, so I'm just over here, you know, testing out the, how they feel, the weight, and you know things just it's nice. So next is to cover the medicine bottles themselves in warbla. This is nice because the warbla does stick to plastic as well. I mean, it's a thermal plastic. Why wouldn't a warbla stick to plastic? So here I've heated up a, a, she a sheet that I had cut out. And I just did some rough measurements. I didn't really measure it too well. So I'm just heating it up. But now be careful as you heat the warble up on the medicine bottle. That's a plastic medicine bottle. And it will melt. And if you melt it, it's not like warbler where you can easily fix it. Okay, so heat it up out off the war off the medicine bottle and then adhere it on there. And if you gotta do reheating on the uh, warbler that's on the medicine bottle do it very carefully. So here I'm cutting off the excess uh, warbler that's hanging over. I could have just folded it onto the bottom, but yeah, I didn't want to do that at this time. Now I'm not covering the warbler all the way up to the top, because remember these are push down and twist medicine cap bottles. So you need a little bit of room so that you can actually push down on the medicine bottle lid and uh, get it to pop off. If you put warbler all the way up to where you see it, it's not going to work. Uh, something else that uh, I used, I have a roll of tape, and I just kind of rolled that to help, you know, keep it smooth and not burn my fingers. But you got to be careful if you do that. You could melt the tape if the warble is too hot or the surface is too hot that you're putting the tape on. But if you have something else metallic, you know, that you can roll on there or use to roll it, might work. So here I'm heating up the bottom of it, and now I'm going to heat up some strips that I'm going to cut out in order to do some... Uh, detailing on the, the hilt. I didn't want to go over detailed, I just wanted to do something simple and easy because at this point I'm rushing to get these swords done for uh, for the Comic Con which was uh, coming up. It's already passed now, you know, I'm behind on posting these videos. Uh, as you can see here I've taken strips of warbler that I had, cut them out, um, reheating them and uh, hearing them back together. Don't be cheap like me. Just cut out a nice, long, complete strip that you don't have to re-piece back together. Because as you reheat this, these are weak points where the warbler will split at first, as opposed to splitting somewhere where it hasn't been cut. Unless you do a really, really good job in mending the warbler back together. So as you can see here, I've covered the foam top. I've added a ring of warbler that I rolled out, and now I'm adding this border that's going to help slip over and cover the white cap itself. Do you have to do this? No, you don't. You can do whatever you want. I'm just showing you what I did. So in placing the lid on there, you know, I, I squished it around. I moved it around as much as I could to get the warbler to, to separate and move away from the lid because it's more like a, a concealed cover because I want to be able to pull that off if I have to. Um, the button comes free because it's actually free floating on the foam button that's just over the lid. You got to be able to push it in and out. So, you know, I'm just trying to cover the button. So as you can see here, the sword's you know lighting off and on as I work on the button itself and trying to get it to uh, not stick. Uh, something I probably could have done is heat it up and just with my hand spread it out more. You know, but it's it's not easy. I mean, it's however you want. And so here I'm trying to add another layer of warbler around the initial one I did just to give it a little more strength. As you can see here, I cut some sides, put it on there. I did a, uh, a ring. I drew out a pattern by hand. I'm doing some angle work, you know, just some simple shapes that I took from the, uh, the middle of the sword uh, where that middle light is at. Um, you can lay the warbler out like this and then cut it with an X-Acto knife. Uh, I tried it a few times. I don't really like it. I prefer to just cut the warbler separate and then 
uh, cut as close as I can and then just meld those two together. So as you can see here, this is the sword with the, the bottom back part of it nicely covered. And in all honesty, I liked that a heck of a lot better than the square box that I had initially started with. So one of the lessons here is, you know, if you start doing something and you just don't like the way it looks, you're not stuck with it. Tear it apart. Do something different. Try something different. Don't be afraid to experiment. Well, I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching. And uh, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Have a good day.